it in here. I'm going to be sitting right there in a bit. Or right here. Right. Well, why don't you grab your headphones? I have my headphones. Oh, perfect. Hey, guys, I'm going to need quiet because it's not unmuting. It keeps unmuting when I hit mute. Welcome to episode eight. And fun fact for you, by the way, that intro is just long enough for me to run out of the studio, into the refrigerator, grab a drink, run back, realize I forgot the cheddar crisps, run back over to the refrigerator, or rock, rock over the kitchen, come back, and then all of a sudden I said I had left them in my office in first place. So, hey, there we go. So now you know. So this is episode eight, which here's the really weird thing about what episode eight is it's called the sevens. And as uh, Brian McGee had pointed out last week, that if we'd have been smart, we'd have thought of this theme last week. Uh, and then we could have called it the eights. We could have just rolled with it and called, hey, this week is going to be called the eights. But it just didn't have a cool ring to it. So basically, this is the sevens. And what the challenge is, and just so you know the behind the scenes how this goes down, typically we all like email each other or text each other really on a Monday or Tuesday. And we decide what are we going to do? What's going to happen here? And... I, we throw around ideas, and then I said, well, you know, and I'm always trying to get them to cook faster and with less ingredients. And that's what we're going to do today. We are going to cook faster and less ingredients. Matter of fact, our chefs are only going to get 30 minutes. One's going to go first, and the other one's going to go second. And then they only get seven ingredients, and they were allowed to pick whatever seven ingredients they want. So I don't want to delay this any longer. Let's go ahead and bring in our other people. Let's bring in John Carney and Brian McGee. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. Good afternoon, Fred, and good afternoon, Quarantine Grill Crew. Oh, we need, like, a name for the Quarantine Grill Crew. Like, you know, like side dishes. That, that doesn't sound right at all. Um, but but it's and yet, and, and yet it kind of does. It kind of does. I was thinking, like, Quarantine Critters, uh, you know, something oh, like that. You know, I'll come, up with, I'll come up with some names. Right. Yeah, our corn yeah, critters. If anybody, if anybody comes up with something in the uh, in the uh, chat box, let us know. Come up with a name for what the the people watching this are, other than diehards, uh, and other than people that clearly don't have lives. But uh, right. so, Brian, how you doing? Good, man. I think I'm going to start cheating and start cooking since I only have 30 minutes. No, no, it's crazy. Uh, no, you, we, we've got us all buffered in. You've got uh, you've got five minutes to chat, say hello to everybody. Show off your crown heads uh, apron, specially made just for you. Uh, just your, your 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 meat belt, wherever that is. I'm sure that's hanging in the background somewhere. The, the it's in the background. That's always, right. always proudly displayed in the background. Right, right. All right. Um, before we get into your ingredients, uh, uh, Carney, if you want to say hello or say hi to anything, and then I'm going to let uh, Brian talk about his seven that he chose. So first off, I want to uh, say happy 29th anniversary to Wade Hill, who's one of our loyal listeners, uh, and his beautiful bride, Kathy, 29 years. Congratulations. They're watching live right now. Um, it's 
they've made it 29 years that they decided to watch our show. That's definitely an honor. And I'm not sure where the rest of this goes from here after that, but wow, thank you for joining uh, us tonight. Hopefully make something good options. for you. Uh, second, Brian already said, I'm going to start cheating. So that means he implying that he was going to be cheating. Uh, for those of you that don't enjoy listening to me, I'm going to be on commentary with Fred for about 30 minutes. Uh, when you do comment that you enjoy that I'm not usually talking, uh, just remember I can't hear you speak or comment until after the show, and that's definitely a blessing to me as well. Uh, so, uh, Brian, start cheating, start cooking. I'm going to go to my commentary section, and uh, and it's going to be Fred and I going uh, going head to head. All right, with, I'm going to bring as I'm you go head to head with me. To Brian, I'm turning this over to Brian, and I am going to show right now. I'm bringing up what Brian's lucky seven is, and you can see that on the screen. So. Um, these are the seven ingredients that Brian shows. He has chicken, tortilla, salsa, cream, chorizo, cheese, and chipotle pepper. And just so the audience knows, the only exception I made is I did not count salt because there was a big discrepancy among the group of whether we had to count salt or not. So we went ahead and let salt slide. But I'm not sure either of them are actually going to use salt anyway. So, Brian, uh, those are your seven, right? Chicken, tortilla, salsa, cream, chorizo, cheese, and chipotle pepper, correct? Yes, yes. So tell so us what you're making. So right now, I don't know, can you see the uh, pan? We can. <laughs> okay, so right now I've got uh, chorizo in here. I'm going to start a chorizo cream sauce. That's going to go over my smoked uh, chicken enchiladas. So as this is going, let me see. I'm going to do some camera movement here. Can you see the prep board there? Yep. Beautiful. All right, so I have some leftover uh, beer can chicken right here. So okay, that, wait, 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 Brian, when you say leftover can chicken, like this isn't the beer can chicken from like six weeks ago show, was it? No, 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 no. this is okay. Like from, all right, good. I'm just checking. <laughs> just checking. This is from last weekend. It's a fair question. Fair. It is a fair question. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to add some salsa verde to it. Get some good chunks in there. Don't make me angry. So hold up, salsa you verde. Like isn't that isn't that multiple ingredients put together into into jar, one ingredient? So isn't that kind of it's out of a jar? Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna let that one slide. But yeah, that's uh that's kind of a good uh, a good question there, really. If I if I made it from scratch, you'd have an argument. Well, you know the big the big thing I was thinking as we were talking about the salt, Brian, the last couple weeks. Well, this last week was I was I changed over a few of my ingredients because I was going to use butter because I was going to use salted butter. So I was like, oh, that's a way to introduce salt with just one ingredient. And then when before the show, when we talked, it was kind of okay to do before uh, you you kind of, before you told us it was all right. I was going to take salt and put it into my oil and make it salted uh, truffle salt oil. Um, so I was thinking of all different ways to kind of work this, but Brian's doing great with the salsa verde there. It's a great use of one ingredient. One ingredient. All right. That's, so fair. Now That's fair. I'll give you that one. So why why is Brian going first, by the way? I, I wasn't quite sure with how this was going to go down. Why, why is Brian going first here? Because I know Brian will only take 30 minutes. You all bets are off. <laughs> I could end oh. the show. It's going to take, See, it's gonna take this, 30, this, 30 minutes this, to talk about Maine. Yeah, this wasn't even a challenge for Brian because I think he's pretty much only been cooking with seven ingredients this far anyway. So really, this show's just about you, Carney. <laughs> so if he goes over the 30 minutes, you guys, you're you going to try to blame that on me because I was commentating and I, and I talked more than 30 minutes. So I, I see how this no, is playing no. out. So there's, this is playing out in Brian's favor right now. There is penalties. There's penalties for going over time-wise. So, uh, Brian, what are you doing? You're cutting up the uh, chipotle there, or what are you doing? So the chipotle peppers, just giving them a little, uh, give them a little chop, and then that is going to go into the chicken. To give it a little. I'm taking a play out of both the, the your guys' books here too. I brought snacks for this first thirty minutes. I got prosciutto over here. I'm a snack. I'm on. All right. Well, so, the good thing well, about well, this is I'll be done first, and like normal, I'll be eating while Carney's oh, yeah. cooking. Yeah. So really nothing's different about the show that, other than I'm using seven ingredients. Carney talks the first 45 minutes. I cook <laughs> and I eat and Carney cooks. Now, uh, Jonathan, I don't know if you can see that this is this is a very old, old chef trick where Brian McGee has the lid of a jar laying on the tortillas. 
that's a thing to flatten out the tortillas. It's 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 old school. I mean, this is you're talking about a technique hundreds of years old. I have not seen in a long time, and that's that's kind of a neat trick. Right. I, I wish we had instant replay because when that jar top fell in, I was like, you know, this is this is a classic moment here that needs to be replayed in All slow mo. Right. Now I'm going to add a base of heavy cream to the pan. Wow. Okay. And let's start making tortillas. You're going to make tortillas? Well, not, well, I'm sorry, rolling enchiladas. Oh, okay. All right, I'm like, okay, all right. Let's sorry. Start, let's start making enchiladas. Well, let's start making enchiladas. Let me rephrase that. All right. Do I have the comment box taking points away for me because the sun's in the wrong... A different part of the sky than it was last week. Was that a hey, comment I just saw? Everything counts here. Everything counts here. Ooh, I like that cutting board. That is a beautiful that's cutting a board. Cutting board right there. All right. So which I think that's the wall nut. About board. one of our sponsors, which is Wood Butcher. Wood Butcher Maine, which brings up some awesome cutting boards. Matter of fact, I think they have. Uh, they not only do they have the cutting boards, they've got some uh, these coasters we were showing off last week, where they've got a uh, place for. Well, I say a drink, cigar, and snacks, but in reality, it is drink, cigar, and uh, I guess ashes. But uh, you know, we're, the, we're still we're still uh, arguing over that one right now. Uh, and then also, they've got a website up and running now, right? Yeah, woodbutchermain.com. There's uh, new products just went online last week from them. Um, also, I think this is probably a fitting time to talk about it. Wood Butcher uh, in next week's Memorial Day episode. Uh, we'll actually be having a live contest going on. Uh, for those that are viewing the show, uh, the more you comment, the better opportunity you have in winning. Uh, we have a program that will randomize and pick any comments uh, from our comments uh, during the show next week, during Memorial Day. And uh, Wood Butcher is making a special block uh, this week that will physically be used on the show. Then we will clean it up. Um, and send it off to you. The winner will be receiving a specially made uh, Wood Butcher uh, cutting block uh, next week on the show. So thank you to Wood Butcher. Great stuff on woodbutchermain.com. Uh, you know, I'm going to be using here in my repertoire. I've got uh, four Wood Butcher blocks. I've got my uh, cedar uh, rot-resistant grill cleaner. I think all you guys got one of those too. This yeah. is truly rot-resistant. I've had this thing outside for over a month. And I just leave it outside and hangs. It's gone through water, rain, storm, snow, everything, all the seasons. Uh, really nice stuff. So woodbutchermain.com. Uh, looking forward to next week. We'll be giving away a, a really nice wood butcher block. Nice. I look forward to that. So, Brian, you're stuffing the enchiladas here, which that is just the beer can chicken and the chipotle and the chipotle and salsa, salsa, correct? And okay. heavy uh, oh. whipping cream in the bottom. And it's whipping cream. Heavy whipping cream, yeah. Okay. It's going to help the sauce and the cheese and all that thicken. Wow. Which is a double-used uh, ingredient, which will go into the chorizo sauce as well. All right. What's the time? Can I get a time check? You're fine. You're only uh, about 10 minutes. Okay. Not even. Same side down. And one more. So, Brian, uh, the the beer can chicken, I know we talked about that. It's not the leftover one you had. Was this? Uh, when, how long ago did you make that? Uh, what is today? I made Monday. it Friday, Friday night. Beautiful. All right. So now we got the enchiladas in. Is that a metal? That's just a metal pan? Porcelain or porcelain. ceramic. Okay. Right. I'm going to add... Uh, Monterey Jack to the top. Can everybody hear the dog going nuts wanting to get yep. to the food? Yeah, that's why the door looks like shit because uh, <laughs> I got two 100 pound German Shepherds that. All right. And then top it with a little more cream. Wow. And let's get that cooking. A lot of cream in this. I didn't realize there was this much this much cream I, that went into. Yeah, this is going to be yeah, a really yeah. rich dish. This yeah. is going to be great. I had no idea. What are, you, uh, what are you smoking, Carney? So you know what? I picked up. I was down in New Hampshire for one day over the weekend. 
and I picked up the soon to be defunct uh, Balmoral Casa uh, Dobles made by Lido Gomez of La Florida Minicana. Um, I coincidentally am the vice president of sales for La Florida Minicana, and I wanted to pick up a box of these because we, we made this project for them uh, mid last year, early last year, 2019, and uh, Royal Agio. It was bought out by General Cigar Company, and this brand's going to be retired, um, and this project's no, no longer going to be. So I was in a store that actually had them, so I picked up a box of 10. It's, it's delicious. It's a nice medium-bodied cigar, but it's the Balmoral Paso Doble uh, by Lito Gomez. So, Brian, what do you what, – so you've got the – so the enchiladas are in there now, and how long do they take? I'm assuming less than 30 minutes. Yeah, they'll take about 20 minutes. Okay, so by the way, I'm counting there? like 15 ingredients right now by the way is anyone Fred, are you counting ingredients i'm at like 15 i'm at seven uh, he's at seven now yeah plus eight i told you double use this is heavy cream i used it twice that's one that's ingredient okay. oh and that's what just the treso, I'm, I'm, the treso in there yes okay. right i'm just trying to commentate what i, I see okay all right so mr mcgee don't make me angry Let's you get this back like on the I'm heat. Angry. Let it thicken. This is awesome. I'm really actually enjoying this. This is the first time in eight weeks I've got to see Brian cook. I mean, I'll talk trash to him and stuff, but this is actually yeah. really enjoyable to watch a person this cook for the great. first time. Because you know, I know I joke now. about during the show. Yeah, and for <laughs> people that don't, you know, that aren't watching us live or don't see what we see from us. The biggest thing that Cole said last week, our guest was, he said, he goes, man, he goes, I had no idea what anybody else was doing. And I said, no, you have no clue what's going on the entire time. So when your Fred says, hey, look at this or check that out, we're like, oh, man, Brian, that looks beautiful. I mean, I literally have no idea what's going on except right directly in front of me. So this is this is great. So Brian, you're doing charcoal, right? In in uh, the grill there, is that in the egg? Charcoal with a little mesquite wood. Okay. All right. So this thinking of mesquite. Up. I'll be cooking with uh, mosquitoes this week because mosquito season is upon yeah. us up here in Maine. All right. So let this uh, warm up, and now we wait. And now so we Brian, wait. That cream, you, that that amount of cream you used, that's going to break down and absorb into everything. So I, I didn't. Yeah. Is that is that normal with enchiladas to, to use cream? Because I mean, I have enchiladas a lot, but I'm not familiar with that. Not normally, but with this recipe, because you know, obviously we're trying to do uh, we're trying to do just seven. I I took a cream heavy approach to it, and yeah. uh, so the chipotles all had the spice. The salsa already had a little flavor. Of course, the chicken, and then with the cheese and the cream, that'll thicken, get real rich, and then the chorizo will just uh, cut it there a little bit. Dude, the, the the biggest thing for me so far to compliment you on in terms of, I know how this flavor is going to come out and the richness of it. I mean, you just straight up used heavy cream and right. dumped it in there. That is that is going to be so rich, creamy, cheesy. I, that, it's just going to be an incredible dish. It'll get, uh, it'll get a little crust on it, and it should look mm. pretty and taste delicious. There was way more cream scenario there than I would have anticipated. <laughs> a little uncomfortable. Yeah, when you said, yeah, when you said cream sauce, I was, I was like, man, he's. I'm wondering what he's going to do with his cream sauce and how he's going to mix it together. And then uh, when you started dumping that heavy cream on there, I'm like, I mean, I really respect this guy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I honestly might I might send my assistant down to the store to go buy some heavy cream and I might just get rid of every, like I might just do a flatbread with heavy cream on it. Uh, another one of our sponsors this week, Red Meat. Lovers. I'm giving this one during the gaps here. I don't know when we're supposed to talk about sponsors, but Red Meat Lovers. Uh, we talked about them. Uh, Evan was in I think week four. I really should know this stuff, but uh, uh, anyway, great great group. If you have a chance to hit any of their dinners, they kind of do them all over the place. They're expanding, growing. Uh, raise a ton of money for a charity along the way. Um, they're ha- coming up with some meat packages. If you're in Southern Florida, you can actually get them now, but they're working on ship. So definitely check out Red Meat Lovers on Facebook and uh, also on the web. Yeah, you'll start to see now that some things are opening up. Um, I know uh, Evan's got uh, some uh, different 
Ben's in the works. Uh, he's got plans to do some things in Tennessee. Uh, he does some in the Northeast in New York. Um, I know he's looking at doing some things in Texas. So, uh, this, you know, as we start to open things up here and the quarantine starts to loosen a little, uh, I said stay tuned to Red Meat Lovers Club. And uh, stay tuned to us because we'll be involved in some of those things too. So uh, you can anticipate some more of that coming around. So, Brian, what's going on right now? All right, yeah, so Brian's you're about the halfway to... mark, Brian. Pretty close. Not quite. All right, let me get... Uh... All right, so I got the enchiladas cooking. I took the uh, sauce off the heat because um, it's starting to thicken, and then I'll put it back on at the last minute, get it hot, and then when we plate it, it'll be enchiladas with the cream sauce on top. So we're just really we're playing the waiting game on the uh, enchiladas, and they're already starting to turn a little golden brown and look a little delicious. Wow. By the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna take some points away since I'm commentating. I'm gonna comment commentate on you, Fred, for a bit. Uh, you know, you don't you're not cooking with us this week, but for those are viewing and but joining have, us have, next I week, have Fred. Snacks. I have snacks. Well, you do, you do. <laughs> yes. but, but I'm gonna I'm gonna critique. But you're still putting together additions. You're putting together the show. Uh, this week's show is called Lucky Seven. <laughs> so we got these sevens, and it's it's Lucky Seven. So, uh, I mean, the, the ingredients we have in here, it's, you know, the it sevens, says, the lucky it says, sevens. It says lucky sevens. Oh, 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 wow. Oh, oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Very well done. Well done. <laughs> that's a, uh, that's a steak tip. The steak tip of the week is uh, diversionary tactics. <laughs> you know the thing, that. another thing I didn't prepare for, Fred, uh, which I've been watching, you, you bring an adequate amount of snacks with you. My snacks were gone in the first five minutes of Brian's cooking. Well. You're obviously not a professional. I get the big bags, you know. Yeah. The only thing is I don't smoke in this studio normally, so that's the one downside. Next week, I am going to be cooking. I'm bringing bacon burnt ends to the table, and this is going to be something that is really, really simple. I'm going to do the first half of it beforehand, show everybody how to tell everybody what I did, finish out the second half. You are going to be, whoever's watching this and watches and learns how to make bacon burnt ends, you're going to be a rock star at your next barbecue, trust me. Oh, you had me at bacon, and you had me at burnt ends. Yep. Brian knows. It's good. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. The uh, I know you were saying you had you bought 12 pounds, so it'll be 12 pounds of pork. Yeah, so uh, I bought 12, po 12 pounds of pork belly should yield um, basically um, about 10 pounds after I take off the skin. It's probably about, it's about 15% skin weight, and I take off the skin. Thanks, Steve, for uh, you know making sure Carney gets negative points for incorrectly trying to correct the meter rater. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Steve. Steve. Steve, I appreciate you and respect you. However, um, the, the the show did say the sevens uh, while I brought that topic up, so it was a diversionary tactic. Give no um, I. That's Give no something proof. I wouldn't have noticed if I wasn't commentating right now. You know. No proof. No proof. No proof. All right. Let's take a look. Ooh, can you see that? Uh, oh yes, yeah. Yeah, she's looking pretty. Getting some, uh, getting it's getting some nice color on the top too. Yeah, there. yeah. You getting that cheese burning up a little? How hot do you think that uh, egg's running right now? That it is running right at 400 degrees, which is perfect. Hey, uh, Danny, I know you're watching the show. Do we have to have enchiladas at medium well also, or is he allowed to turn those <laughs> out at a, at a, at a reasonable uh, temperature? I just. <laughs> Need to go to Danny for the the expert opinion on that. Right. Yeah, to the comment box on the uh, the opinions on temperatures of things being cooked. I, I will give it to him. He, he, you know, he's turning over a new leaf. He's learning from us. Uh, I've seen his uh, his son in law uh, has posted some meat that wasn't as heavily cooked as I had experienced in the past or been requested in the past. So his That's son in law Danny Bradley is respecting it. <laughs> That's Danny, true, right? Yeah, it was a virtual virtual. Yeah, they told him they told Danny him that it was well medium. done. He's going to let medium slide. Wow. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> so there's a couple of exciting things we got coming up. Uh, so we got our Memorial Day uh, backyard barbecue extravaganza yeah. coming up yeah. on the 25th. That'll be fun. A great day to celebrate America and those that um, you know those that sacrificed for us. Um, for those that are watching up in northern Maine or in the Maine market or New England, if you vacation up here during the uh, during the summer months, uh, Fourth of July is really just a little over a month away. Uh, we'll be doing a 4th of July episode, and then if you happen to be in Maine viewing this, I know everyone is, is uh, makes fun of me for saying that, but uh, we put on a massive fireworks show on Coldstream Pond, and this year uh, we will be blowing up the lake. 
uh, in celebration of getting out uh, the bent up energy that we have from this quarantine. So big fireworks show, big deals for uh, for the Fourth of July on quarantine grilling. Brian, you're, All right. Right, you're right. right around the 10 minute mark. Best case scenario. 10, what, 10 minutes to go? Yeah, well, you have really 11. Okay. Is it bragging to say I won't need it? Yeah, no, I know you don't. I, I know you don't. Does Carney will? I don't know. <laughs> Carney, had, Carney had seven ingredients. I think he can keep it at the 30 minute and we can all get out of here and start drinking and smoking. Are you smoking, Brian, or are you just cooking? For the... I'm going to smoke when I'm done with this. All right, all right. So we'll bring up your sponsor and your company when we're sitting back making fun of Carney. Exactly. I mean, when, we're, when we're watching Carney and learning. When we're a lot. watching. That's what I meant to say. So, so for the record, eat, this is last the week's episode. Well, la- last week's episode, I only used eight ingredients. So I used eight ingredients last week. I just used butter in like seventeen different Which ways. Brings uh, your ingredient total to nine hundred and twenty. Since yeah. we started, I want to go. I want to go back and review the tape. There was a lot of like, I don't know, woodland pine cones and like Maine this, Maine that. I'm, not, I'm calling. I'm calling BS on that. This so this cheddar. Is there was one item we were talking about. Best corner of the state. Yeah. Well, there was an item we were talking about last week. Cole and I were mentioning uh, the fiddleheads. Which yeah, is yeah, like yeah. essentially a fern bud. Hey, now we missed it literally by one day. The next day, uh, the fiddleheads started to sprout. So now we have fiddleheads up here. So I'll be cooking some fiddleheads next week too. So anyone that yeah. was interested in that, yeah. Which is so, Brian. No, nobody wants how do you? Know? How would you traditionally prepare your enchiladas without a limit of seven ingredients? I think that would be that's something that I'm interested in because uh, to see how you broke it down and the reasons why you picked the seven ingredients that you picked. Well, to be honest with you, this is the first time I've ever cooked enchiladas. So, <laughs> yes, this is this is uh, this is how I would do it. Actually, I would there probably add uh, with salt and birdie. I would add some. Uh, I would add some probably like diced uh, green hatch chilies to it. And uh, the chorizo thing is new, so that uh, normally I would do like a sour cream sauce or something like that with the. Uh, with the chicken, but uh, I'm I'm dying to see how this chorizo sauce does. Yeah. Sauce is ready, and we're getting ready. It's almost uh, we ready to plate. Can you see the uh, the board right here? Yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful. Great setup. Right. Here we go. Here we go. Wow. Wow, wow. All right, let me get some gloves on. This is going to be really, really hot. That looks awesome. Wow. I'm like really hungry now. The, the, the thing about this, this is going to be great too. This is going to be an awesome leftover dish too. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, cream is yeah, just going to soak sure. into everything. Like this is going to be better in like eight hours. Wow. That well, good. that's why we did 30 minutes. Is there oh, anything good. more satisfying than drizzling a sauce over the top of anything? It's just there's something very satisfying about that. I don't oh, think crazy. there is. And you were you were at the 25 minute mark. Actually, okay. 24 minutes. 24. 24 minutes. Pretty impressed Let's by see. that. Let's give this a shot. Right there. How about that? Look at this. I'm over the spoon. Yeah, you better get good with that spoon because remember, that's your one tool you picked for the kitchen. Look at that piece of right. chicken. Oh. 
Yeah, technically you snuck in another bit, another you know, beer can chick. That's going to be really hot, Brian. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cream, Cream Max is out at... Uh... <laughs> wow. All right, hmm. So I'm looking forward to getting cooking because the spot I decided to stand for this, and obviously I'm going to have to move this around because the shadows have changed with the sun higher in the sky. I'm right directly next to my charcoal. I have I have like a sunburn, not from the sun, but from my charcoal over here on the side. I used about 30 pounds today. It's it's quite aggressive. Brian, that looks great, man. That looks right, awesome. That is the spice from the peppers. Real hot? Uh, the cre- Obviously the creaminess, the cheesiness. That chorizo adds a uh, man. It's it's a it's actually it's really really good. It really I mean for such it's so easy to make. There's a lot of flavor here. What's the last flavor on your palate when you swallow and it clears out? Same way why you smoke a cigar. That, you know, we were talking that, about that, What's the last flavor? I'm getting uh, like a creamy spiciness from that chipotle. That chipotle just lingers on the back of my on the back of my palate. All right, put your camera. Back. Awesome. Finished in at exactly 20, uh, let's see, uh, 21 minutes and 30 wow. seconds. Brian All achieved right. a, a uh, full amount. Of, well, his highest point count was 212 points for the meal. Uh, he lost 35 points for using an extra ingredient uh, at the very finish. Whoa, 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 whoa. What, was, what was the extra ingredient? Uh, the extra ingredient was basically the skin that came off the roof of your mouth when you took a bite too early. So we're, uh, we're going to count that. <laughs> That's 35 points. Seven. <laughs> I know I'm a Marine, but I can still count the seven. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, Ernie, you are up. You are ready to go. While you're getting your stuff prepped there, I am going to say at least two thanks to Crown Heads for being a sponsor of the show. They um, Somewhere their logo is around here somewhere. Uh, if I knew what I was doing, then uh, it would be up right now. Uh, let's see. Where is Crown Heads logo? I have Crown Heads logo somewhere. Oh, there it is. Because it's not Crown Heads, it's McGee's Smoked Meats. So uh, thank you guys. Matter of fact, um, this week, Crown Heads was my pick on the um, where I've been doing a different, uh, a different, um, uh, uh, sh- sh- uh, what, I can't even talk right now. Uh, I've been doing a different <laughs> shop and a different cigar every week. And uh, this week, I actually had used an uh, um, underground cigar shop in Fort Worth. And I ordered a big assortment of uh, Crown Heads, so that was really, really cool. So I'm pretty happy about that uh, and looking forward to enjoying another one of those cigars tonight. So, Carney, it is all you all the time right now, or at least for the... Hey, Fred, you know, at least minutes. you haven't been able to speak right, but at least you pronounce meterator correctly for right. the first time ever. Actually, thank you so for getting noticing. So getting started here. Go ahead. Was yeah, plus, I'm commentating. Mm-hmm. So... We're going to get started off by cleaning our grow grates off with the, uh, let's be very blatantly obvious in this advertising pitch, my wood butcher, rot resistant cedar grow cleaner. So my grill's all cleaned off. Uh, we're using this week, we're making a Wagyu ribeye filet. So the spinella or the rib cap has been taken off and we're using a Wagyu ribeye filet. Great marbling. And we're gonna make we're gonna make a uh, we're gonna make a a half whole wheat half regular flour uh, flatbread. We're gonna do a steak flatbread here. So my seven ingredients: we've got ribeye provided by Snake River Farms. I'm also cooking a secondary uh, ribeye here just for snacks. This is an end cut. This is regular choice. So if you look at this, you can see there's some really good marbling on this. The end cut of ribeye. Whenever you go to your local grocer, local meat purveyor, or wherever you buy meat. Ask for end cuts. They have incredible marbling. Um, and I'm just going to cook one of these to snack on. So we've got those on there. Flaming hot charcoal. My favorite is the royal oak. Oh, one ingredient there. Second ingredient is flatbread. So we've got the bread here. Uh, it's fresh. We're going to roll it out. Make a couple flatbreads with it. Um, the third ingredient is uh, arugula. So we have some chopped up arugula. Chopped arugula. The next ingredient is black truffle olive oil. We're going to hit the steaks with that and the actual flatbreads. We're going to grill those flatbreads right on the charcoal today. 
I think this is our fifth ingredient. It might be fourth. Um, we're going to be using some sun-dried tomatoes. So we got sun-dried tomatoes. There may or may not be some shallots mixed in there. It came with the mix, so it's one ingredient. Uh, and then the last item we've got here, I think this is item six. Sorry, we're going to be using seven, but this is six, is our gorgonzola cheese. We've got gorgonzola cheese, ladies and gentlemen. Gorgonzola cheese. And then we're going to top it all off, as I said, with a little bit of the truffle oil. And we're going to use balsamic glaze to have a nice flatbread. Good for a dinner item. Uh, entrees, excellent. Snack. Uh, I would actually prepare this on my end. If I was creating a meal, this would be a uh, flatbread course. So I would traditionally do, uh, I'd start off with like a light appetizer, uh, maybe like a shrimp cocktail of some kind. I'd do a flatbread course. And this would involve, since I have the arugula on it, it would be essentially a flatbread and salad course so we'd kind of have like a salad on top like a steak salad on top of the flatbread and then we'd go in and have some more steak for dinner and then uh do some ice cream for dessert by the way one thing from last week uh since this stuff's not going to take me very long this week i'm probably going to be done in about five ten minutes here uh talking at least um cole brought over uh his dinner uh that he made last week it was amazing he he, he did truly did local everything this the beef he had was from pass keg maine uh, um, it was a little tough, but the flavor was super gamey. It was great. Uh, it was weird to get game, gamey taste from, uh, from cattle like that. I um, mean, he also did gift me and I'm going to ask one of my assistants just to bring this down for me uh, in a few minutes here. He gave me the rest of the cigar infused ice cream. So I'm going to eat a little bit of that today too. So we've got that, but that was awesome. And the reason I asked about Brian from you, I asked about the finish on the flavors when we ate the ice cream, when you have a cigar where you have something that's got spice to it. Uh, you, you have that finish on the back of your throat and to the back of your palate. This ice cream was a very similar experience that you described that you got from the pepper uh, and the cream sauce that you made was where you ate the ice cream. You had that sensation of cold. You had that mouthfeel, the creaminess, and, it, and the finish was like a peppery cigar finish. Uh, so it was a really, really interesting dessert, and it was fun to be able to try that. So, yeah, we just got the steaks on here. Grills real hot. I'm going to probably cook these. Um, I'm going to cook the ribeye that I'm cooking for snack, medium rare. And then, um, I'm going to probably go medium on the Wagyu. The reason I'm going to go medium on the Wagyu is because it's so much more fat. It can handle a little bit more temperature and I want to break down some of that fat in the center part. This is an eight ounce Wagyu filet, uh, ribeye filet. I want to break some of that fat down. And I'm using my wood butcher serving platter today as a double, a double use. Um, instead of using the serving platter as a serving platter, I'm using it as a uh, place to roll out my, my flatbread dough. So the flatbread dough, no yeast in it, so it stays flat. We're not looking to have it rise. I'm going to cut this directly in half, and then we're going to roll it out. And uh, I've got a little flour down here to make sure that it uh, doesn't stick to the wood. And i got my roller. So we're going to cut this in half, and we'll get the flatbread going. Uh, the good thing with this is we can get the flatbreads going a little sooner. So when the steaks are resting, I'll put the flatbreads on. That'll give me a chance to uh, keep a closer eye on the flatbread so we don't burn it. And one thing I am going to do is I'm going to put a little oil on the flatbread. Uh, it's going to go on twice. The first time, I'm just going to put it on dry. The second time, I'm going to put a little oil on it. I don't want a lot of flare-ups, but I, as we all know, I do like char quite a bit. So I do want to get some char on there and treat the flatbread to the, the char experiment. And always you want to put a little flour on the roller so the dough doesn't stick to it. And really what I'm going for is kind of like a long oval here. Maybe about a six tenth to sixteenth of an inch. I don't know that's a big range, but we'll try to make it as even as possible. And it's going to be a little over a foot. Hey, Jonathan, is this something that you can do with uh, various different types of cuts? You don't have to stick to ribeye. You can do. Yeah, you can do anything. Uh, honestly, most of these, um, most of the time I have flatbreads are maybe like sirloin, um, you know, and you can use tenderloin. Um, the reason I'm using the Wagyu is Wagyu's got a really good, uh, obviously a really good flavor potential with the marbling and the fat in it. Um, and also Wagyu tends to be very, very tender. So essentially I'm mimicking a very tender steak with a cut that would be a little fattier. Um, so, but yeah, you can do this with anything. 
Well, but you definitely know, want something. The, uh, flour that you're using in the in the, um, uh, in the flatbread. Uh, I have uh, if it's fifty percent whole wheat flour and it's fifty percent regular uh, bread flour. And the the, the Wait, recipe is very simple. It's Brian. Is that two ingredients? Nope, it's one ingredient. It's two flatbread. It's flatbread. It's, flatbread. it's one like flatbread. Two, two, two flowers. Uh, but if like somebody's <laughs> interested in making this, a flatbread recipe is very simple. Uh, you don't need yeast. This is this is really just fifty uh, percent wheat flour, fifty percent um, regular red flour, white flour. Um, it has salt and it has water and olive oil in it. So it's very very simple. Nice. Let's go over uh, takes as we got a quick second here. Let's do the top five of the week. So we were thinking of road trips and everybody heading off Memorial Day weekend uh, and being on the road. And somehow we started talking about fast food. So this week, what we basically are, our top five were our kind of guilty pleasure foods, our, our, our guilty pleasure fast food meals. Um, and it was divided up. And oddly enough, I think that myself and Carney got a different idea of the question than Brian did, because Brian actually just named actual entire chains. So I'm going to assume that he's just okay with everything on their menu. Um, and as usual, you can vote in the uh, in the uh, comments section for whose list you think the best. Uh, the winner of that gets absolutely nothing at all but our extreme admiration. Uh, but McGee, his fast food meals would have been Whataburger, Brahms, Cane's Chicken, Torchy's Tacos, and Waffle House. Uh, I gotta get, I gotta be with you on that's a solid solid list. I, I'm I'm a big fan of Torchy's Tacos. Uh, big fan of Kane's Chicken. I think it's probably one of the best chicken finger uh, type places out there. Chicken tenders, whatever you want to call them. Uh, Brahms is solid. Whataburger is solid. I'm not a Waffle House fan at all. Uh, and I know I've just... Hey, by the way, Waffle House, Waffle House isn't really fast food. I don't know. I get in and out of there in 15 minutes. Yeah. I mean, the food gets through your system faster than that. I don't know. what. Yeah. How is that not fast food? Fred, by the uh, way, the uh, my, grill cream, my grill cam is back up. This is good. So, um, also on the on this, uh, Carney had picked basically the double quarter pounder with cheese, which I'm assuming that's McDonald's. Is that right? McDonald's, absolutely love McDonald's. Okay, all right. Uh, he's gonna go Baconator, which I believe is Wendy's. Uh, Checkers Baconzilla. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm liking the bacon theme. If you're trying to bribe a judge, that's not a bad way. Uh, triple water burger with triple cheese. A uh, little overkill for me, um, but you know, hey, it's your list. McDonald's French fries, yes. I would have said McDonald's French fries. Well, I want to talk about Flat. this in a second, especially with the group. But, um, you know, Flat. McDonald's French fries, say, 10 years ago or even 15 years ago before they, like, cleaned up the oil or something. You know, I mean, back when it was just, like, lard, I think they were a lot better. Yeah, uh, they used to use just lard. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll still say they're good. But, you know, if you've ever had old French fries or whatever, you realize just once they're, they're not hot anymore. They're really horrible. Uh, my list was the McRib sandwich, which I'm sure everybody knew that one was coming. Uh, Taco Supreme from uh, uh, Taco Bell, which, by the way, I'm well aware that that's not really a Mexican restaurant, but I'm super happy with Taco Supreme at 2.30 in the morning after a, a cigar event. Uh, Chick-fil-A's peach milkshake is outstanding. Uh, Arby's roast beef sandwich and, I mean, a major guilty on the road going through their Auntie Anne's mini pretzel dogs. Uh, are super super not the not the big ones not the big pretzel dogs only the only the small ones so um, by the way if i'm in texas i just stop at bucky's and i could put i would just put bucky's unless brian i'm kind of disappointed you didn't just put bucky's there nothing else. well i mean bucky's Texas is a gas station so i, I guess i could have put bucky's just i could have also chick-fil-a to me chick-fil-a to me is a sit-down restaurant they have a drive-thru I know that's a sit-down restaurant. They have flowers on the tables. Yeah, it's a sit-down restaurant. It's fast food. The, 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 the conditions put in yeah. place were fast food. Wayne says, yes. my list is a bomb. Thank you, Wayne. Cole's surprised there's no Beyond Burger. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not <laughs> sure what accusations he's making there, Brian. Come on, man. Just Come one on. show. <laughs> Just one show. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh man, Brian and his veganism. So now you'll never, you'll never get to get away from that. I never. The flatbreads were going straight on the grill or on the coal, on the car call. They are on the grill. They are oh, on the grill. Okay. Yep, straight on the grill. I thought they were going on the charcoal, and that was something I wanted to see. Okay, all right. So they're just going on the grill. They are on the charcoal. No, they're on the charcoal. 
Oh, you mean directly on? No, no, no. They're on the charcoal. They're on the charcoal grill. Uh, the second one's going on there now. Um, the reason I put the second one on, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to put the second one on because I want to see how this first one looks when I flip it. And if it's not in a good situation, then the second one's going to get treated a little different. But it's coming along good, so the second one's going on there. By the way, my top five list is kicking butt over everybody else's, just so you know. Well, here's, a, here's a question for the audience. Is Five Guys fast food or not? That was a good, that was, uh, there was a, a late hour call on that. Uh, I didn't weigh in on that, by the way. Um, to me, I would consider it kind of pseudo fast food. Um, and I threw the word pseudo in there, so I was very noncommittal on saying whether it is or isn't. Uh, but yes, I would say that I it is. Can I consider Five Guys quick service because you order it and then they make it. When you get to McDonald's or Wendy's, they're already making the food, anticipating your arrival. So that's for me the which classifies fast food in a different way than quick service. So I consider okay, so then, even so Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A so to me what, is borderline quick service. So Wendy's is not fast food then. Wendy's is fast food because they're they're they're, 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 they're no, cooking no, they're cooking no no they nah, they prepared nah order. borderline they nah nah order. I they're, they're, that, they they have some pre rules. prep that prepares you to be there. No burger prepared no, in advance. No. That's your own rules. No, and, 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 and this because McDonald's now does that ready-made kitchen where they construct your burger. When you order it, doesn't mean they cook the burger. When you order it, Five Guys, they, they put the burger on the grill, and they make your burger specifically for you. Wendy's is anticipating your arrival, and there's prep that's done. And they, they put it together while you're there, but they don't make it. I, don't know. I think you're talking semantics there. I what mean, are you getting from the chat box on this, by the way? That's important. Uh, the comment I section. I mean, so, so uh, if Thomas Keller did fast food, it would be five guys. So, yes. Uh, it was fast, uh, no drive through for five guys. Not fast food. Not a bad uh, definition, Steve. Fast food has to have a drive through maybe. So maybe five gonna, guys I'm, is quick service. Yeah, I'm going to buy that before I'm going to buy uh, Jonathan's whole, like, who's cooking it beforehand. Because McDonald's has a vat of fries. They're not cooking them individually for you or anything. Yeah, but I'm not arguing that McDonald's isn't fast food. McDonald's is certainly fast food. So here are the okay, uh, flatbreads. They're sitting here. They're getting some good heat. Nice. They look good. Danny said everything has drive through but Five Guys does not. Now, Five Guys does not have a drive through Five Guys is one of the best burgers on the planet. I, I, that's something we'll have to do on the on a burger episode sometime. Talk about our top burgers because uh, there's some fantastic burgers out there, and some of them come from fast food. In, in my opinion, too, I think there's some really good fast food burgers. Well, Wade Wade pulled out the Google and he said I would never use Wikipedia in my master's program, but Five Guys, Five Guys Enterprises LLC, doing business as Five Guys Burgers and Fries, is an American fast casual restaurant chain. Focused on hamburgers, hot dogs, and French fries. I didn't even know they had hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, they do hot dogs. Isn't it? Isn't it great though that they create all these different restaurants have created all these different terms like fast casual, quick service to get away from the term fast food. Right. And, and it's just like there's endless amounts of categories in this now. I, I, I mean, I'm I'm heavy in the restaurant industry because of my father and growing up, you know, in it. And to watch the last 30 years of how the terms have changed and, oh, this is the fast casual chain and this is the upscale casual chain and the upscale fast casual. There's 10 billion different chains. And the reason they're the names and classifications, they're there because all these people are trying to not sure, be considered sure. fast food. Which doesn't matter because other than Wade, who the heck has ever pulled up the Wikipedia of Five Guys Enterprises LLC to, salt, to decide for themselves whether it's fast food or not? <laughs> drive through. I think, was it Danny that said drive through? Uh, well, Danny said everything is drive through. Steve said no drive through for five guys. I think drive through defines fast food. All right. So here's here's another reason why I would say it's fast food. If the majority of your business is not only dine in, but you do just as much to go, even though you don't have a drive through, more people call it in and pick it up to go than they do sit and eat. Is that considered uh, fast food? I don't know about that. Just means you have really good to go business because then I'm going to say ABC liquor is fast food. You know? Okay. <laughs> well, and then and then your local farm is like your local pharmacy fast food because they got drive through. I don't know. 
Well, no, but it's got to be a food restaurant if you're talking drive-through. I, I, All right, guys. I hey, guys. So move, moving on here. I'm doing. I'm doing some. I'm about to do some cooking. So what I'm going to do Fred, here time is I got a. I got a. Uh, I got a cast iron food, pan. So I don't know. <laughs> I got a cast iron pan going here. What I'm going to do is because I don't like putting just, just raw ingredients on top of something. Is I'm going to put in my cast iron. My uh, my sun dried tomatoes, and I'm gonna put some truffle oil in there. I'm gonna heat those up a little bit. I said I don't. I just don't like putting cold ingredients right on top of something. I want them to be broken down a little bit. So we got the flatbreads going. I've got that on the cast iron. I'm getting a little bit of. Oh, this is going great over here. I'm getting some crust. That looks good. I'm gonna flip oh, the other one here. Perfect. Oh, oh. got my char. Little charring going on there. Little charring. I'm, I'm, I'm channeling my inner Francis Malman. There will be an episode, by the way, where I'm gonna. My dad's sitting out here, so I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna try to give him a heart attack. But I'm gonna dig a bunch of holes in the ground and put stakes in and just create these gigantic bonfires. And we're gonna cook a whole side of beef or something on it. Um, so get ready for that. That'll be a fun one. But that's uh, if you ever have a chance to watch online or just Google this, uh, Francis Malman, uh, he cooks with fire. And he loves oh, char. He chars vegetables. He's, um, that, he's right? got a restaurant in Miami. Yeah, it's on a chef's table. But Francis yeah. Malman is is one of my inspirations for all my char. So I'm not going to cook this up too much, but I am going to get some heat going on it with the uh, sun dried tomatoes and the oil. It's also going to absorb some of that flavor from the oil, and the oil absorb absorb some of the flavor from the sun tomato blend I got. Um, so I just want to get a little simmer going, and then I'm going to shut it off so it doesn't uh, doesn't completely cook them. Because there is something nice about a really fresh uh, sun-dried tomato. So I, that texture is what I'm going for, but I want to break down and bring some of the flavors out. What's my time right now? Because, I mean, I'm, I, you're, as long as the uh, flatbreads 20, are coming you're, along. You're, 20, you're 22 minutes. Perfect. This is the least amount of cooking I've ever done on this show. So we have a we have a, a judge call in here, uh, and now I have the screen up here on, of a, of an, a potential sneaking in an extra ingredient. Uh -oh. And I'm looking at this, and I see Pam cooking spray, and we have an arrow pointing to it on the cutting board there. Whether that was in use or um, that is an ingredient. It's. Oh, by the way, it's a double use. It's olive oil, and I'm using olive oil, so this is the same ingredient, just used in two different ways, Brian. Uh, I don't know. Let's go to the other <laughs> list here. Um, you'd like to flash my ingredients back on the screen. Olive oil is clearly on there. We'll leave that up to the meterator to decide. I, I, I yeah, think the meterator, uh, everyone watches, should just be happy that I'm putting together a meal in under 30 minutes. I mean, come on. Yeah, and I, by the way, I don't see, and, list. and I went ahead, at, at your request, I have put back on the screen your list of ingredients. I actually don't see olive oil on there. I do see truffle oil, uh, but I don't yes, see olive oil. olive oil infused with truffles. <laughs> so, uh, so, so uh, oh, wait a minute. Okay, oh, that's fair. So you're telling me the Pam cooking spray is also truffle oil infused? Absolutely. Oh, you are so I want to so close up on that can I again. I want to close up. On that <laughs> no, we don't have that kind of tech. We don't have that kind of technology. <laughs> I didn't pay for that kind of technology. So two different. All right. Oil. So okay. Flatbread's coming along right now. I'm just getting a little bit of char on the other sides. It's pretty uneven. The charcoal is pretty uneven, so I'm flipping the flatbreads around a little bit. I'm closing the top to give the steaks a little bit of time just to sit and rest. But yeah, I'm going to pull one of these flatbreads off. We're going to hit it with some of the tr olive oil infused truffle oil. Well, we might as well just use the spray. It's the same thing, right? Use some drizzle. <laughs> I like to drizzle because it's satisfying, Brian. Oh, okay. How are you going to sell it? <laughs> I have to respect how much that Carney is like keeping it together. 
I know, even though it's a tiny thing, he is so pissed with himself right now. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. The rage is just almost a boil over. Don't make me angry. The only reason I use like the I'm only angry. reason I use the Pam spray is because it was easier to get coverage on those flatbreads than doing the drizzle. Okay. Yeah, the only way is to drizzle, you didn't want to spray it all over there. I get it, and one of them you wanted to tuffle, one of them you didn't. That's fair. That's fine. Oh, man. All right, I'm going to close the top on this. The steaks are off. We're going to put the steak on towards the end. So right now I'm going to drizzle the cheese. Got the gorgonzola going on. I love gorgonzola, so we're going to get a lot of this. Is this just a fancy uh, open face sandwich? Somebody might say this is a, uh, a classic pizza, actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who those people are that would say that. <laughs> you have four minutes left. So we got the gorgonzola going on. I got plenty of extra gorgonzola off to the side here, which we'll put back on the top because we want to have a lot of cheese. Get the truffle oil drizzle. Now we drizzle. Steve said you're not trying. Thanks, Wes. I'm not. Wes, big time supporter of McGee. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Fred. And we're about. drizzling on the uh, <laughs> sun-dried tomato blend. Sun-dried tomato blend going on both. The regular sun-dried tomatoes mixed in. Get the steak cut up over here on the wood butcher block. Good medium. Susan makes a good point there, Fred. Yeah, she does. She does. Susan Definitely basically said, next, next time use a paste brush and brush the bread with the truffle. A rookie mistake, but we'll let it slide. Uh, yeah, Susan, you, we, I didn't, hey, I didn't I, want to say anything. I'm, my truffle oil is getting questioned. By the way, the reason I use this I use this little truffle drizzler I got is that I found it in my basement. Okay. Pretty freaking cool. So I like to drizzle, and also I'm getting picked up, picked apart on ingredients here. I don't okay, know where that's I, coming from. I, I left Ryan some, alone. Some I left Ryan alone. I, from, I left him I, alone, Fred. I, I found cleats from softball years ago in my basement, but I didn't work them in the show somehow. So leave it, leave that at home. I left Brian alone on his ingredients. I didn't question one time any of his ingredients because my seven were clear and concise. So how much uh, how much time does second place have left? Uh, he has two minutes. That looks delicious. By the way, you don't get extra points for for not for not using all of your time. I've watched this on Chop before. The people that get done early, the chefs go after them, and they're like, "That's true. Why That's wouldn't you use your time?" Blah, blah blah blah. So I'm gonna use all my time here. But how could I have elevated mine more with more? I didn't have more ingredients to. I wasn't cooking your dish, like so I can't. Even there's there's the uh, there's the evidence right there. So we're putting the arugula on the top. We're gonna do a little more drizzle over the top here, and then with the uh, oil, lots of arugula. A little more truffle oil drizzle. Fred, I think uh, Carney's gonna need a hug after this. Yeah. Hey, uh, Steve is asked, and I meant to ask you, so what did you light up, McGee? What are, what are you smoking? So, you know, Carney sent us the butcher block, so I'm smoking the LaFleur um, Oro. What? My yeah. butcher block didn't come with smokes. It, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, thanks. Uh, his, uh, well, that's, his, uh, in Brian's, in Brian's uh, defense, I sent him some cigars because his butcher block may have been used, and his came from me. Uh, yours came directly from the butcher. Yes, mine is much nicer. I'm going to smoke when this is all over. I'm going to go with the La Coalition. 
Nice. Nice. Made it to a state broadly for dual wrapper. Yes. And I was super impressed by that cigar when I first had it, to be honest with you. How much time do I have? What's that? You have less than a minute. Do I have? You have less than a minute. Can I get a count? Uh, you have 32 seconds as far as, you know, you know. Yeah, I don't worry. I don't need them. So uh, the flat it's done. I'm going to show you two different things. Here's the finished product that's on the grill cam. Oh, Let's go, no. uh, oh. Ah. Hey, by its. Mm. Good move drizzling that balsamic instead of using a brush, too. And then I want to show you something here. This is how good the flatbreads came out. I want you to see the the strength of the flatbread. This is me holding a flatbread without a board. So we've got oh, the wow. crisp. That nice. And we're going to take a bite. Okay, don't do that. You're making me nervous so it finally breaks. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I would just cry. So if anyone watches the Barstool Port Sports Pizza Reviews by Dave Portnoy, the crunch is, is important. we got a lot of crunch going on here. You can hear it. Here we go. Oh, sounds good. So there you go. That's steak, wagyu filet, ribeye filet. Gorgon's Zola flatbread, all done on charcoal, seven ingredients. Killer. Ish. Well done. Well done. In 30 well minutes-ish. <laughs> By the way, as with Brian, this is the first time I've ever made flatbread from scratch. Highly recommend this recipe. It's real good. Yeah, that looks really, really good. You know, I don't think I've ever made flatbread from scratch, so, um, so another but the first. Crust, yeah, the, um, the texture is perfect. I want it crispy, because my dad and I really like crispy crust, and, um, I don't know, you, how do you, what do you think of it? Oh, he's got headphones in. Um, but we really like crispy crust, so this thin crust worked great. I said, if you can see it here. There it is, right there. There it, uh, no, no, there it is. There it is. Woo, man, that looks delicious. That does look really yeah, good. Awesome dish. I mean, it's yeah, nice this is awesome. I mean, we've like been making a hundred. Mm. Mm. It's a really good change of pace. The other stuff we've been making. Because this is really a, I mean, this is snack food. You know, this is like a pass around type, uh, type item. I said I really like gorgonzola, so I'm going to throw some more gorgonzola on there. And the balsamic vinegar for the gorgonzola and the, uh, the balsamic glaze is excellent. One bite, Carney, one bite. That's right. Everybody knows the rules. West is not wrong. Hmm. Okay, let me do some housing. Did I miss any sponsors? Did I forget to shout out and say hi to anybody? Uh, we did our top five. We didn't do the which would you. I could save it for next time, though. Yeah. Deal. I had a joke, but I guess I'll, I'll save that for next week, too. The food's all done. That looks delicious. That does look really good. Mm. Well, yeah, this came out great. Mm. So for the talking heads, I can cook a meal in under thirty minutes. <laughs> okay, so next week we'll do twenty-two minutes. No, I'm just kidding. We will. We will not. Yeah, Brian, Brian, Brian set the time for next week's show, but for being done in twenty-one minutes. Yeah. Hey, you know, you should do it like one of those game shows where, Fred, you pick a dish. Yeah. And and I go, I bet I can do it twenty-two minutes, and the card is like, I bet I can do it fifteen. I bet I can do a 14. And see who can take it down the lowest. There we go. Mm. So um, as we get towards the end here, I just want to mention everyone next week on a Memorial Day episode, we'll be doing backyard barbecue items. <coughs> um, the Wood Butcher will be sponsoring a giveaway. The more you comment during the show, the better chance you have of, of winning. We're using a software. We'll fully disclose it. That's a total randomizer. 
Um, it'll be our ninth episode, so we'll hit the randomizer nine times. Um, so the more you comment, the better opportunity you have. So invite people to join. Come watch the show, and we'll be giving away a wood block next week. So that'll be pretty fun. I'm looking forward to that. I have no idea what the randomizer is uh, either, folks. So I'm kind of liking how I handle this and randomize uh, everything here. So um, this week, as far as our winner, before we wrap up, uh, anything last to say that you can catch the guys in the Zoom after call? Uh, your host will actually be running out and grabbing something to eat. Uh, it's some sort of uh, fast food restaurant, I'm sure, after all that talk. Uh, anyway, so Brian, any, any, any final words? No, I tell you, for the first time cooking uh, enchiladas, they turned out really good. So this will be something I do again really soon. Jonathan? For the first time in a while, Fred. We'll wait. We'll wait. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait. I'm, we'll wait. I'm, we always do. I'm speechless. I'm speechless, <laughs> and I have speechless. nothing else to say. I think my I think my dish speaks for itself today. All right, well, uh, the points are tallied, and we've gone through, and actually, for the first time ever, we have a tie. You both tied today, so it was oh. it was very close. Uh, I, the edge, what, what caused me to not be able to pick it is that both of you went outside of things that you had cooked or familiar with. You were both playing with some first-time stuff to see, and it could have went miserably. Uh, it went well, uh, so I'm going to give you a tie. I almost had to give the edge to Brian. Uh, because, you know, the big uh, scandal with the, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, Pam there. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, I was worried it was going to pop back up. But there's there's the Pam thing. But other than that, Tarney handled it very well. So I'm declaring it a tie. And um, and just for the record, uh, you know, you guys better bring it next week because, you know, I'm setting up the grill. I am bringing bacon burnt ends, and that is going to be tough to bid, uh, tough to beat. Uh, those of you following along at home, if you want, uh, if you want to uh, cook the week after me, I will share exactly what I do. It's not that hard, and I'm looking forward to, you know, kind of bring to these guys and show them a little bit about, you know, what they're missing, kind of elevate the show a little bit, getting back on the grill with them. Not good grief, <laughs> <laughs> Brian. We're gonna have we have one more person to deal with next week. We usually just have to deal with him in terms of his talk, talking, his commentating. Then we're going to have to actually cook with them. This is going to be ridiculous. Right. But next week, next week, our, our commenters are going to get to decide the winner officially. Oh, that's, that's fair. I mean, we, they get fair. their opinions, but they're going to get to decide the winner officially. And, you know, the randomizer is random, but, you know, it can be it can be bought. There's Anything can happen, you know? I I'm just can, saying, we, if you're picking up, up what I'm putting surprise. down, I can be bought. <laughs> I'm just saying that there's another prize uh, that we can dig out there, uh, and that's okay. And you know, I mean, you know, Bar Carney will probably go to his basement to find a prize where Brian and I will probably come up with something good. But I'm just throwing that out there. Just throwing that out there. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your ideas. If you've got ideas for shows, hit us one up on social media. Let us know. We're always looking for good ideas uh, because as a group, we, we suck at it. We really talk around on Tuesday and go, hey, you know, what are we going to do this week? So uh, other than next week, what we know we're doing, we're going a good old-fashioned weekend barbecue with the family so we're looking forward for that uh cole already has me six points up for the pig so i'm already winning next week so till then guys <laughs> enjoy have a good week of cooking and we'll see you next week thank you guys have a great week